Hi, Angus and I are back to talk about more grand theories of development. Today, let's talk about cognitive theory. And cognitive theory focuses on the structure and the development of an individual's thought process across the lifespan. The theorist we're going to talk about today is Jean Piaget. And Piaget was a scientist, not a psychologist. In fact, he was originally a biologist. He became interested in psychology, however, when he was hired to field test questions for a standardized IQ test. His job was to find the age at which children could answer various questions correctly. But this did not interest him. He was much more interested in the incorrect answers and how children arrived at the answers. How children think, Piaget said, is more important than what they know. He viewed cognitive development as a process that follows a universal sequence of age-related patterns or periods. So before we go through these stages of cognitive development, I want to describe to you some key terms that underlie his theory. The first key term is what he called a schema. And a schema is a cognitive or mental structure by which people intellectually adapt to and organize their environment. So a common schema that most people might subscribe to is the constellation of a family. For some people, a family means a mother and father and children all living in the same home, and that would be their schema or their cognitive structure for a family. Another individual might see a family as an extension of related or even non-related people, uh, not necessarily all living under the same roof. So that's an example of schema. Now, the next term Piaget laid forth is called assimilation. And assimilation is the cognitive process by which a person integrates new information into their existing schema or patterns of behavior. This is different from Piaget's concept of accommodation. And accommodation occurs when new information cannot be assimilated into an existing schema. So here's one way you can determine the difference between assimilation and accommodation. Imagine that your teenage son says something that you've never expected him to say before. Imagine that he comes home from school and he says, I'm going to get a nose ring. As a parent, you can do one of two things. You can either assimilate what he just said by deciding that he did not really mean it and you maintain your current schema of how you view your son. Or you can accommodate what he just said and expand your concept of your son and incorporate this new image of him. So that's an example of accommodation versus assimilation. Another key concept underlying Piaget's theory is this term called cognitive equilibrium. Everybody strives for what we call cognitive equilibrium, which is a state of mental balance. And it's achieved through the development of mental concepts that we use to explain our experience. Sometimes when we don't understand things or things don't make sense to us, we enter a state of cognitive disequilibrium. And this is a state of imbalance and this feels really uncomfortable. And as humans, we don't like this. We really like order. We really like things to make sense in our world. So we're gonna try to sort things out and regain our cognitive equilibrium. But it's this cognitive disequilibrium that pushes us towards growth because we search for new answers. If something happens or we see something or experiencing something, that doesn't fit into our current schema. We're going to try to make sense of this new information and regain our cognitive equilibrium. Now, let's talk about Piaget's stages of development. The first stage is what Piaget called the sensory motor stage. And this is between the ages of zero, so birth, to age two. 
And the hallmark or the key words for this term, for this stage, are called senses and motor skills. So a young child is going to explore their world through their senses and their motor skills. So they're going to pick things up once they gain those fine and gross motor skills and taste everything, as you've noticed, a baby between the age of anywhere from six months to two years old. They're going to taste things. They're going to put things into their mouth. They're going to want to touch everything and grab things. And this is how they learn about their world, through their senses and their motor skills. One hallmark of this stage that appears is what we call the object permanence concept. And this is where a baby begins to understand that an object still exists even when it's out of sight. So if you have a toy and you hide it behind a blanket, a child during this first stage of development will gain the cognitive ability to realize just because that object is hidden, it didn't disappear forever. The second stage is what Piaget called the pre-operational stage. And in this stage, the hallmark is where children develop the ability to think symbolically. If you say the word cat, they can hold in their mind's eye an image of a cat. The second hallmark of this stage is egocentric thinking. Egocentric thinking is the inability of a child to view a situation from another person's perspective. An example of this would be when my son was approximately four years old, and again, I think I neglected to say that this stage starts at age two and continues until about age six or seven. So an example of egocentric thinking was when my son was about four years old and um, we were sitting around the dinner table and he was talking to his Uncle Scott. And I said to Spencer, and Uncle Scott's also my brother. And my son was completely baffled by that concept because from his perspective, he related to the world from the inside out. In other words, he related to the world as if he were the center of a wheel and all the spokes originated out from him. He couldn't understand how there could be a dual relationship, that Uncle Scott could be two things, not just Spencer's uncle, but his mom's brother. So that's an example of egocentric thinking, not being able to view a situation from another perspective. The third stage is Piaget's concrete operational stage. And this is between the ages of approximately six to seven until adolescence right around ages 11, 12, 13. And again, these ages are approximate based on each individual child's course of development. So during this stage, children's thinking is limited to what they can see, hear, touch, and experience. Children think logically at this stage, but they cannot think hypothetically yet. They have to think in terms of things that are real, things that they can touch, hear, and experience. One of the hallmarks of this stage is an understanding of the concept called conservation. And conservation is displayed this way. If you give a child a ball of clay, you roll it up into a nice round ball, and then you take the clay and you roll it back and forth so it kind of flattens out into a long snake-like piece of clay. And you ask the child, which is more? Did the ball of clay have more or did the snake of clay have more? A child at this age is going to recognize just because the shape changed, the mass did not change. So they understand this concept of conservation. This is a hallmark of this stage. The last stage is the formal operational stage. And this is from adolescence on through adulthood. Hallmark of this stage is a child has the ability for the first time to think hypothetically. A child can deal with abstract concepts. You can talk about things mm -hmm. like religion and spirituality. You can talk about theories such as this theory of cognitive development with an adolescent or a young adult or even an adult. Prior to that, children simply do not understand abstract thinking. 
At this stage, children can formulate and test hypotheses as well. One thing I want to point out, just because at adolescence and through adulthood, an individual is capable of thinking at a formal operational stage, doesn't mean they always do. For example, when you're driving to school each day or you're driving to work, do you think about the abstract theory of gravity, perhaps, as you're watching the raindrops fall? Of course not. You're thinking very concretely in terms of logic, the, the map route to your workplace or that sort of thing. So just because we have the ability to think at formal operational thought doesn't mean we always have to. So in summary, Piaget's theory holds that the most important thing about a child's cognitive development is not the product of what the child thinks, but it's a focus on the process of a child's thinking. And again, thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you for the next little video clip. Have a great day.